This review is for Dragon's Dogma, official design works, published in 2012 by Udon Entertainment. Before I saw this book, I had never even heard of Dragon's Dogma, and it's not unusual for me to read and enjoy books based on uh, franchises or properties that I'm not really aware of or not a fan of. And in the case of this book, like I said, I wasn't even aware that Dragon's Dogma was a thing. But I think this is the first time that I enjoyed an art book so much that I then went and got the game, and then I immediately became enamored with the game itself, and since then I finished the game, but my first first exposure to this world was from this book, which I enjoyed so much. Udon Entertainment, who published this book, are one of my favourite publishers of all time. Most of the art books that they release are for video games, and mostly Capcom video games like this one. And even though their books tend to run a little bit more expensive, but I admire the stuff they've published so much that just having that Udon logo on a book really gives me the confidence to try it out. And I can't say with 100% certainty that they've never published a bad book, but every single one I've read, which I would say is at least a dozen, I have never seen a bad one yet. I did a review on the Monster Hunter illustration books, volumes 1 and 2, which were also Capcom games, the art book also published by Udon, which is kind of similar to this one, and even in that review where I said the actual contents, the art, wasn't really my sort of thing, I still really appreciated what a wonderful book it was. Whereas with this one, not only do I think it's really well produced, but I really love the art presented in here. Although I may be giving Udon Entertainment um, a bit more credit than it deserves at the expense of some other publisher or company because it's my understanding and please correct me if I'm wrong that Udon isn't actually responsible for any of the contents or design or layout of the actual books themselves instead they just do the translations and distribution for the English speaking market so I'm not actually sure who we should thank for these wonderfully produced books because all of these Capcom video game art books are published first in Japan. So I don't actually know if the books are all designed in-house at Capcom, but I imagine they employ another publisher or design company to actually produce these books. But whatever the case, um, at least you can say that Udon has a really great eye for deciding which books it wants to publish and release in English. Because there are actually tons of video games that have art books that only get releases in other countries, particularly in Japan. And finding out about those and buying them can actually be really hard if you're in an English-speaking country. And so I just think it's so cool that Udon translates these books and makes them more uh, widely available to an English-speaking market. But now let's actually get into the contents. So the first thing you might have noticed is that this book is super thick. It's over 300 pages, and the pages themselves are really used to maximum advantage. They really cram a lot of great stuff into this book. I think one of the things I find most appealing is the fact that this is such a thorough design document. I feel like with a lot of other art books, be they for movies or video games, they're really only presenting sort of a showcase of the best of the art that was produced because a video game will have thousands and thousands of pieces of art produced for its development. And so when you get a 160 page art book that has, you know, maybe four or 500 images in it, like I said, it really feels like more of a showcase or a best of. And with this book, kind of like with the Monster Hunter illustration art books, it gives such a sense of completeness and satisfaction which I just love. I always hate when I get an art book and then I see online an image that wasn't included in the art book because I know when I'm a big fan of a video game or a movie I really want to feel like I've got the complete definitive collection and the way these books are produced really help lend itself to giving you that sort of satisfaction. And even though I'm positive this book does not contain nearly all the works that were produced for the game. It has this really great sense of feeling like, almost like this was a design document where they kept everything for the development of the game, like this was their design bible that they would use and reference when making the game, which I really enjoyed, and the text really supports that idea, which I'll talk about in a minute. The variety of art presented within is also fantastic, and my favorite part were definitely where they show the evolution of characters or the monsters. They're not afraid to include the very earliest concept illustrations that really often bear no resemblance to what ends up being in the game. And so many art books neglect to show the earliest stages and sort of jump to almost 
completely final designs or sometimes they'll show like here's the very earliest idea and then jump to the final one whereas i really enjoyed this book's attempt to showcase what came first then after that then after that then to the final design or even showing alternate designs and directions the book also features quite a lot of unused art which is always one of my favorite parts of art books it's just so great to feel sort of privy to the evolution of the designs what immediately attracted me to this book was the art style, the fantasy style they've gone for. I mentioned it's very similar to the Monster Hunter illustration books, which I didn't actually really like the art in that because it sort of lent more towards a JRPG style, you know, where everything is sort of very over the top. The helmets are gigantic, the swords are like twice the size of the characters, the creatures are so crazy. It's just got that very sort of over the top aesthetic, whereas I feel like the design direction for Dragon's Dogma was actually much more of a blend between JRPGs and sort of Western fantasy RPGs. You can see that the designs sort of have this more restrained approach. Not so over the top and over embellished, but at the same time you can still really feel the sort of JRPG almost anime influence to the designs that isn't present in something say like the Elder Scrolls. So you look at these costume designs and things and they still have this really great uh, level of intricacy and detail that I really think in my mind uh, typifies my idea of Japanese fantasy design. And you can really see the evolution of that because in a lot of the earliest concept art pieces like the girls have sort of you know really sort of almost like Lolita style fashion you know tons of bows and ruffles and you know a lot of the guys have sort of like really weird helmets that <laughs> are totally impractical and have like one eye hole and are asymmetrical and the creature designs they explored had much more of like a Hayao Miyazaki sort of aesthetic. And you can sort of see how a lot of those ideas were reeled in as it took on more of a semi-realistic Western medieval look, but still retained a lot of the things that give it that unique JRPG feel. So I mentioned how a lot of video games get Japanese art books, but not English releases. And sometimes I'll buy them, even though I can't read Japanese, just because I think, well, the art is the main thing, right? And you can enjoy that without the text. And there's not really a lot of text in here, so what am I missing out on? Well, that's why I love these translations from Udon, because they really show what you are missing out on. So there's not actually a ton of text in the book, but the design comments are sprinkled out so frequently that you actually feel like you are getting a lot of insight. The actual comments being made are sort of typical. They range from either being often very obvious to being sort of genuinely insightful. And what I really liked in a couple of the comments specifically for this book was they didn't really seem to be um, as afraid of admitting when things were challenging, when something wasn't working, and even when, you know, long after the fact, what they would actually, if they could go back and redo with a design. The comments just have this really sort of much more personal, again, candid kind of feel, like almost like the designers sitting there with you and just sort of talking about it casually, which I really liked. But my favorite part of the text is on a lot of the pieces, there will be what I imagine were originally uh, handwritten notes, just pointing out details or things that needed to be perhaps communicated to other departments and model builders, game designers, things like that. And that again really lends itself to that idea of what I was saying of this feeling like uh, the design bible that they would have actually been using. Again, the like candidness of those little, the little hand-drawn notes really make you feel like you're privy to a lot of the design process, things that you don't actually usually get in a lot of art books. Like those notes aren't just to explain something to you as a reader of this book. They're actually there as practical design notes that were used by somebody, and I think that's really cool. And as we're going through, you'll see the book is jam-packed with stuff, although in the character art section, that actually kind of feels like more of an illusion because sometimes you'll get the exact same character illustration sort of like copied and pasted again and again and again and again, but like on one of them, the vest will be a slightly different brown color or the lining on this cape is slightly different to the last one and it feels like most of the page is being filled by the exact same image over and over again and you've got to sort of play a uh, spot the difference game to find what's actually different but having said that I really do enjoy that they show that sort of crazy level of detail that needs to go into designing a game you know we all know what a 
medieval fantasy king looks like. So it's not like they just do one concept piece and then say, okay, that's good enough, which it probably is. Um, now let's move on. It's like, no, okay, now give me that exact same thing, but with 20 different variations of the beard. And even though any one of the beards would have worked fine and probably no one playing ever even <laughs> really notices or cares. And I just think it adds a whole nother layer of fun and interest in the game that when you're looking around and you see that everything you're seeing was the result of a meticulous decision not just someone saying okay that looks like a king done so i guess a bit of that repetitious space filling up of the same model is actually kind of okay just as long as it doesn't get used <laughs> too much my only major point of dissatisfaction with this book is that as you may have seen it is a paperback, and although I've been very deliberate and delicate with how I've been handling the book, trying not to open it too much, to put too much pressure on the binding, but the fact is, when you've got a book that's this thick, that's a paperback, you're going to run into problems, and already I've started noticing the signatures coming apart, and if you don't know what signatures are, you'll see that the pages are grouped in sort of sections, and towards the front and end of the book, those sections or signatures have started already coming away, which is not fun. But I really, really enjoyed this book. One of my favorite video game art books, uh, so much so that, like I said, it actually inspired me to get the game. Which is why I'm really glad that this is the sort of book that I would recommend not just to fans of the game, but it can be absolutely recommended to anyone who just enjoys really great fantasy art. Because, like I said, that's what attracted me to the book without ever even having heard of Dragon's Dogma. Just the world they've created, the character design presented here, the monsters, the environments, the weapons, the armor. It's all here and it's all done so well.